like the diagram that shows here. Here it's showing the posterior and anterior joining together and forming a continuous flow. That doesn't happen, all right? It happens elsewhere in the body, including in the brain. Remember the cerebral circuit? You guys talked about that with neuro. If not, we'll talk about it with this unit. In the shoulder, blood flowing along the subclavian artery to the axillary artery to the brachial artery. There's seven or eight branches that you're given off before the shoulder and after the shoulder. So if there's a blockage in the axillary artery, a branch coming off here can join with an artery that's coming off here, and the two are continuous, and then just go around that blockage and still get blood flow into your hand and forearm. The heart that you would think would be really critical that that happen, it doesn't. These don't join. If you do aerobic exercise and cardiac workouts, you'll make additional blood vessels to supply work to your stressed heart, but they won't join together so that if this vessel is blocked here, you know, it can come and get to that tissue from this vessel. It doesn't do that. You can make more blood vessels than people who have had heart attacks. They'll increase the number of blood vessels sometimes by using a laser to poke holes in the heart muscle tissue. I know it seems rather drastic, but that increases angiogenesis or the formation of new vessels. Okay, so putting it under stress causes new blood vessels to be made. All right, so now let's look at the drainage. So these vessels are going to send smaller branches deep into the cardiac muscle. And they're going to form arterioles and then capillaries. And then the capillaries are going to come back together to form venules and veins as they move back up to the surface of the heart where we find the veins. And the veins are going to join on the back side of the heart to form the coronary sinuses. So let's get to where I have those labeled. All right, so we'll start. we have three veins. So I want you to know where they are, and I want you to know what arteries we find them in. Obviously, the blood flow is going to be in the opposite direction because venous blood is going back to the heart. Arterial blood is going away from the chambers of the heart. Okay. So traveling with the anterior interventricular artery and the circumflex artery, we have the great cardiac vein. So we see it in the interventricular sulcus. So it's traveling with the anterior interventricular artery there. And then it's going to make this turn. And it's going to travel with the circumflex artery posteriorly. And in the back, it's going to dilate to form the coronary sinus. So cardiac vein, great cardiac vein. There. Still great cardiac vein with the circumflex artery. And it's going to dilate to form the coronary sinus. So here on the anterior view, you can see the great cardiac vein with the anterior interventricular artery. Then it's going to turn and go to the left, go around the left ventricle between the atrium and ventricle. And then here on the back side, you can see it dilated at the base of the left atrium to form the coronary sinus. Right. We looked at that earlier when we were finding the coronary sinus inside the right atrium. Now the small cardiac vein is also going to be found with two vessels. We used it to find the marginal artery. So here's the small cardiac vein along <coughs> the interior border of the heart, traveling with the marginal artery. We're going to find small cardiac vein with the marginal artery. And we're also going to find it continuing with the right coronary. So 
there's not two separate veins. We just see it with both of those vessels. All right, so here's the marginal artery. And we have our small cardiac vein. Now it reaches the coronary artery. And it's going to go posterior. And it's going to empty into the coronary sinus. So both locations, it's identified as small cardiac vein. Now you can see on the front one or two other cardiac veins right here. Here's one. It's not connected, it's not going around. It's just going straight towards the right atrium. That's called an anterior cardiac vein and it doesn't go into the coronary sinus. There's just small little openings for those individual veins to go directly into the right atrium. But the small cardiac vein is going to be this one that makes the turn and goes around to the back and if he's into the coronary sinus. And again, here's a small cardiac vein, and here it is coming around. Here's the coronary artery forming posterior interventricular artery, but the coronary vein is going right into the coronary sinus, okay, on the posterior surface. And then we have one more, and that one travels with our posterior interventricular artery. And I'll draw this in a dotted line as well because it's posterior. And it's going to go into the coronary sinus. And that's the middle cardiac vein. So we find the middle cardiac vein. Time is lab time. Okay, so just continue working with your heart model. And these are the structures that you need to know from the heart. I think the PowerPoint pictures are clearer than my diagram, but <laughs> all that overlapping anterior and posterior. So I'll leave that up there. one chamber, the easiest one is the left ventricle because it has the thickest wall, 
And then the chamber associated with that is going to be the left atrium. And if you know the left atrium, any vessel you find in the left atrium is going to be a pulmonary vein. And the opposite chamber from the left ventricle would be the right ventricle. And above that would be the right atrium. So once you know where you are, then you can start identifying the structures that you know are found with those chambers. Okay, so you just need to be able to identify one structure in there, and then you've got the key to all the rest of the heart tissue. It's going to seem a little confusing at first because they're frozen kind of back together and you get oriented. Recorder up front, I'm not going to be lecturing anymore, so don't forget to leave it behind. <laughs>